We are travelling back to one of Doctor Who's most interesting and colourful eras within the show, as today I'm going to be taking a look at some adventures featuring the Sixth Doctor as portrayed by Colin Baker. As in today's Doctor Who Big Finish audio drama review, I'm going to be taking a look at the Doctor Who Big Finish main range episodes, Memories of a Tyrant, Emissary of the Daleks and Harry Houdini's War, featuring Nicola Bryant as the TV companion Perry. For those of you that have not seen my previous Doctor Who Big Finish main range review of the Seventh Doctor Mags trilogy, just as a little bit of a catch up as opposed to reviewing each individual main range release every single month, I've now decided to condense down all of those reviews into a perspective of all three stories within the trilogy. So in today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the past three months of releases. So now the main range reviews will in fact be every three months as opposed to every month, as it just generally makes it easier for me due to me covering a very high volume of Doctor Who Big Finish audio dramas on the host productions. But due to this trilogy being another series of Sixth Doctor adventures, I was very excited to finally be taking a look at some more Colin Baker stories, especially alongside Nicola Bryant as Perry, considering that I haven't in fact reviewed or listened to really any Sixth Doctor and Perry adventures from the early half of the Sixth Doctor era, so this trilogy in a way for me was a jumping on point. So now delving into the world of the Sixth Doctor and Perry, starting off with the first episode of the trilogy being Memories of a Tyrant, as written by Roland Moore. Now on paper, this story is everything that I could want from a Doctor Who episode, because naturally being a law student, I am fascinated by that whole idea of crime and offences and the possibility of motive and guilt. And in this story, we see the Sixth Doctor and Perry travel to an institution out in space, a space station in fact, called the Memory Farm, and it has this concept where every single memory that you ever have is in your head somewhere, it's just a matter of retrieving it. So you may think that you can't remember something, but it will be down there somewhere deep down in your mind. And in the story, we have the concept of a detainee known as Garius Marole basically being interviewed for a crime, a very serious crime indeed. And we see them using this memory technology on him, trying to find guilt, and they are questioning him and questioning him and trying to find out if he committed the equivalent of genocide to an entire planet. And he doesn't know, he literally does not know if he has committed that crime or not. And even if deep down you have that gut feeling that the person did commit the crime, how can you sentence somebody who physically does not actually know they did it. Originally starting off, I think that this story is very self-explanatory. We see the Doctor and Perry arrive, and they are very intrigued by this whole idea of memory, and we really nicely see the concept of the story presented through the eyes of Perry, because her father died at a very early age, and this story sees her within the memory farm, trying to retrieve those happy memories, just to see what life was like when her dad was alive. And naturally that portrays an image in your head of how the memory farm works very nicely from the get-go of this story. However, from the midpoint onwards, this story starts to take a much different turn. Of course, the Doctor is friends with this character called Varish, who is also a lawyer, and he basically met her in another adventure off-screen, and we see their relationship kind of unfold. The story kind of turns into a whodunit murder story on a space station. However, it then takes a different turn and starts contributing different locations on a prison planet, and we see the Doctor in one of the these prisons. And I think that at this point within the story, I was worried that it was starting to go off and get distracted by doing other things, and it wasn't being too precise with the actual plot that it was trying to handle. And in the later half of this story, we do start to see all those elements coming together. We start to see Nicola Bryant as Perry kind of become the main character of the story, and essentially save the day and save the Doctor, which was very nice. And I think that the Sixth Doctor and Perry worked incredibly well throughout this story, and I think that they contributed contributed something to this episode as well that really nicely strengthened their relationship. I couldn't wait to hear more of them within the later half of this trilogy. A few notable mentions, I did really like the character of Varish as portrayed by Diane Keane and also Joseph Meidel's performance as Garius Moreau was absolutely brilliant. I think that you could have very easily had a story that was Dr. Light and just been an episode completely about him and part of me does feel that maybe this story would have been a bit better if it was focused more around Garius, because although it was in the early half, as I say, this story just had to deviate within the later half of the episode. I think it would have been nice 
choice to maybe go back in time, see more of his life, get to know him personally, and then maybe even proceed onto the trial of the character, and then still you're debating, has he done the crime or not? And what I do love about this story overall is it does have an element of mystery to it, but perhaps in parts, as I say, it does deviate off the main point of the actual story, and I would have preferred it to remain a little bit more streamlined and flowing, completely revolving around Garish's character. But overall, essentially, if you like science fiction, if you like the whole concept of memories and dreams, this story is perfect for you. And also, if you're a Black Mirror fan, think entire history of you, funnily enough, the episode that Jodie Whittaker starred in, because this story is very much like that, but less technology. It's kind of like revolving around memories and excavating memories from the head, and what you can do if you can literally just access parts of your life at the click of a finger. It's quite a powerful one, intriguing, and the fact that I can actually think of these characters within the story and come up with alternative endings for the episode says something. I enjoyed it, and I was intrigued. Moving on to the second story of the trilogy, we have Emissary of the Daleks, as written by Andrew Smith. Now, I must admit, I went into this story absolutely dreading it, which is a rare occasion for Big Finish, but I really, really did, because the first thing that I seen on the front cover, it's a lovely front cover, don't get me wrong, the first thing that I seen was Daleks and a mine. So, automatically, my head was like, Daleks, they're gonna want an awe, and it's down the mine, and it's gonna basically be any Doctor Who classic series Dalek story, because Daleks have an obsession with mines and ores and minerals. However, I was pleasantly surprised, because yes, this Doctor Who story is quite traditional. Yes, it features the Doctor going up against the Daleks. Yes, it is a planet that's been taken over by Daleks, and there is rebel fractions. It's all your traditional Doctor Who. However, this story has taken those traditional ideas and made a much more contemporary and modern form of storytelling, which makes it generally a lot more effective to other Doctor Who serials that we've seen in the past. And naturally, the Daleks within this story feel very, very deadly. They have a zero tolerance throughout this story for people stepping in the wrong direction or doing the Daleks wrong, or failing a task, they will kill, they will exterminate. I think that Andrew Smith's way of writing the Daleks in this story is absolutely phenomenal. To be honest, I would love to see him write for the Time War, because if he can write this for just the regular Daleks, imagine the angry Time War ones. I imagine he could do brilliant work with those. I really do recommend this story if you are looking for an episode where you want to see the Sixth Doctor absolutely shining, because Colin Baker is phenomenal throughout this script. I think he contributes a really brilliant role as a Doctor, and he enters every single scene with such power and sass and sheer intelligence. He is a Doctor that is arrogant, but also he knows he's amazing, because he is, and therefore he may as well show off that power, and I think that Colin really nicely acts throughout this story, as I say. Nicola Bryant as well, once again, their relationship is incredibly strong throughout this story, and there is a wonderful interrogation scene, which isn't necessarily a spoiler, because it can also be heard ever so slightly in the trailer, and Nicola Bryant's performance throughout that scene in particular, being interrogated by the Daleks, does once again feel absolutely ruthless and deadly and brilliant. So yeah, big thumbs up to both Nicola and Colin for their excellent performances throughout this story. Nicholas Briggs is the Daleks as well, brilliant. I think that his variations of the different Dalek voices were quite nice, and the sound design for this story was a little bit unusual and something that I've never heard done with the Daleks before. They sound much more like a machine or a tank with their weaponry sort of clunking and you can physically hear that on audio, which I admit at start was a little bit odd because I never normally come to expect it in a Dalek story. However, over time you do kind of get used to it, but I still kind of imagine some people will not like it at all. It's kind of one of those Marmite things. As I mentioned earlier, a rather brilliant concept in this story is that the planet Omnia has been taken over by the Daleks, and they have this rule where the history books must be completely destroyed. Nobody is allowed to talk about the past, nobody is allowed to write about the past, and nobody is allowed to record anything. And we have this whole idea of a rebel fraction starting up their own rebellion group and reciting the old manuscripts and bringing them back to life. I really love that idea throughout this story. And the fact that Perry joined one of those rebellion groups, you actually felt immersed within the story, like you were a part of this group lurking in the shadows of this Dalek city, almost imminently under attack. It was a really effective script and did actually feel like the characters were certainly in danger. 
Ninja. Saskia Reeves as Carmen Rager was also a brilliant character. She was the Magister of the planet Omnia, who has been put in control by the Daleks, and basically she's their puppet. She does what they want in order to get the planet how they want it. And I think that she's once again a really well padded and really well written character. There's lots of emotions with her. Originally you start off thinking she's just going to be another cold and calculating villain that is working alongside the Daleks and is incredibly naive because she thinks she's going to achieve supremacy or something like that. However, within the later half, you start to see her crack and you start to see her become a little bit more personally affected by the Daleks and there is a lot of emotion within her performance. So a massive thumbs up to Saskia Reeves as well for delivering that. So overall, Emissary of the Daleks is a lot of fun. I think it's a great Sixth Doctor story and as I say, perfect opportunity to see the Sixth Doctor shine as all of the main characters within this episode as well as the supporting cast do an incredibly good job. However, it would have been nice to see this story maybe depart even further from the traditional Dalek roots, maybe adding a few more unique traits of this story that wouldn't be seen in other Dalek episodes. So I feel like this episode did have the opportunity to do that, however it didn't. But that doesn't mean it wasn't an enjoyable listen, because it still was very fun, and certainly has lots of potential, and by far probably one of my favourite Dalek stories for quite a while, certainly of this year. I think that out of all of the episodes within the Sixth Doctor 2019 trilogy, Harry Houdini's War was the episode that I was most looking forward to because I've kind of gone past the excitement of having Doctor Who Dalek stories by this point, although they are an excellent jumping on point and a great opportunity for new series fans to enjoy classic series Doctors with one of Doctor Who's most familiar villains. I think that this story was the one I was most looking forward to simply down to the fact that it seemed to be the most strikingly different of the lot naturally I love historical Doctor Who stories and I really love when they involve a historical setting within a science fiction format and naturally this episode as the title suggests is focused around Harry Houdini of course the famous magician and illusionist. Now in this story he's portrayed by John Schwab and I think that his performance as Harry Houdini is absolutely superb. Throughout the entirety of the duration you really get a great understanding of the character and especially his relationship relationship with the Doctor. Of course, throughout Doctor Who history, we have had a number of throwaway references to the Doctor visiting Harry Houdini. I think that most recently, in fact, within the 13th Doctor era in Series 11, we had a moment within the uh, witch story, I think the Witchfinders, where Jodie says about meeting Harry Houdini and doing escapology or something like that. And in this story, we have that referred to, not necessarily his meeting with Jodie. However, we have his references to the previous incarnations that have met him. So now, Actually, this story kind of cuts to the chase. It has already established that relationship with Harry Houdini, and I think that the Sixth Doctor and him get along rather well. However, at the same time, their relationship, even though we've not really seen it other than within the 50th anniversary audiobook story, Smoke and Mirrors with the Fifth Doctor, his relationship with the Doctor is very strikingly different within this episode compared to the other episodes or the other experiences that he has had with the Doctor in the past. Compared to the other stories, within this trilogy, I think that Colin Baker's portrayal is much more serious. I think that compared to the other episodes that have a slight sprinkling of comedy or sass, this episode is a lot more down-to-earth Sixth Doctor. He's a lot more strict to the point. However, at the same time, due to the alien of this story not really having too much prominence, it gives the Doctor more of a spotlight throughout this episode, and it is clear that the Sixth Doctor really doesn't fit in. He's a Doctor that is almost proud of being different. He's a character that is, in a way, the Harry Houdini of the universe. He is an alien from out of space that can pull off magic tricks, he can appear out of thin air, and he can just stand out like a sore thumb, and I think that Colin really nicely portrays that throughout this story. Nicola Bryant as Perry does also have a few nice moments with Harry Houdini, especially within episode 2 and into episode 3. However, her character isn't really much of a focus. I think that she does certainly take a back seat throughout this episode compared to the other episodes within this trilogy. Which that said, because we have had such a brilliant contribution from Nicola Bryant from both In Memories of a Tyrant and Emissary of the Daleks, I kind of didn't mind that she'd taken a back seat throughout this story because it is very much the Doctor and Harry Houdini 
Houdini's episode, and that goes for the alien presence as well. The alien within this story isn't really that visible. It's not a character that we see a lot of. It's not a traditional Doctor Who story where the alien is introduced and the Doctor comes face to face with that alien. There is the combat and conflict between them and then the Doctor ends up defeating them. Throughout this story, it is kind of just the reference of the alien being there. And then in the later half, that does of course come to the forefront of the plot itself. However, for the story's majority, it is focused around Harry Houdini and the learning curve and experience that he has from once again meeting the Doctor, which adds an interesting twist, and I think that Steve Lyons does do a very good job with that. I think he writes the character incredibly well and makes this story feel a lot more unique than your traditional main range episode that kind of follows the same usual formula. This story goes against that formula and does something ever so slightly different, so I appreciate it for that. Steve Lyons was to change anything about this story, I would have probably liked to see a little bit more of the early 19th century New York environment. We do get to see that throughout the early half of this story, with Harry Houdini doing one of his many performances in New York City. However, it does very soon hop away from that location, and I think it would have been nice to see a bit more of Harry Houdini within his usual environment, because for some reason I do really like the historic side of New York. I love the Roaring Twenties, and I think that the events running up to that, including the early 19th century, would have been nice to maybe see a bit more of throughout this story, as I say, as opposed to maybe focusing a little bit too much on Germany. The Sixth Doctor and Perry 2019 trilogy is without a doubt a lot of fun, and I think that it summarises the early Sixth Doctor era very well. If you are looking for some audio drama examples of Colin Baker being absolutely superb, then all three of these releases are worth considering. He continues to be one of the best Doctors on audio. He's fun, he's intelligent, he's sarcastic, but most importantly, he's alien. I think Colin knows his Doctor inside out, and this certainly shows. He loves how much his Doctor stands out, and that makes every release featuring his name an absolute joy to experience. Nicola Bryant is also great company for the Doctor. I thoroughly enjoyed hearing them together again, allowing them to expand on that close relationship that didn't have the opportunity to be presented in season 22. Memories of a Tyrant is your out there science fiction drama, with some truly thought provoking concepts. It stands out from a lot of the other main range releases because of that, and Gary Smaro is a well rounded character. Emissary of the Daleks is your traditional Doctor Who story but still manages to portray a modern approach on a classic Dalek serial. Living on a planet of Omnia, dominated over by the Dalek overlords, created the suspense and threat that this adventure needed. It's one of those stories that I recommend to the newer listeners who wish to experience the Sixth Doctor, however don't want to stray too far into new territory, having a familiar foe as the main threat. Ending with Harry Houdini's War, a much more heavily focused character piece rather than the Alien Invasion episode. The main selling point of this story is of course the Doctor finally meeting Harry Houdini in the full cast audio drama format, after having many references throughout the TV show's history. And because of that, I do think that this story delivers. All of the main characters are really well written, so it makes it very hard to not feel involved within the plot itself. Although I do think that the alien aspect of this story may let it down ever so slightly. The next outing for the Sixth Doctor is the Lost Original Season 23 story, The Ultimate Evil, which is released this November, followed by the Big Finish Christmas Special episode, Blood on Santa's Claws, coming this December. So thank you very much for watching this Doctor Who Big Finish main range audio drama review of the Sixth Doctor 2019 trilogy featuring memories of a tyrant, emissary of the Daleks, and Harry Houdini's war. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the three releases within this review, please do feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and we'll of course try my best to reply to them at some point in the near future. And naturally, of course, stay tuned for more Doctor Who Big Finish audio drama reviews every single month on the host productions. So thanks for watching, I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.